Welcome back, everybody. It's about time I got this video up. Let's get after it. This is so insane I had to share it with you. The Stolen Z06, an Instagram account that recently began going super viral. I'm sure some of you have seen the clips. I can't begin to tell you how many people have DM'd them to me because what this guy does is he sets up a 360-degree camera to the back of his car, same setup a lot of people use, but then he actively goes looking for cops to bait them into a chase so that he can then run from them and post the videos. Now, I'm not sure how many of you will remember the old Ghost Rider videos from the early 2000s, but it's basically the same premise. His first upload was six weeks ago, but after getting away with fleeing from the police so many times and continuing to upload, it was just a matter of time before his luck ran out, and boy did it ever. Because this video here started circulating last week of the CMPD trying to arrest him, but they screwed this up somehow. They actually pushed his car, you can see right here, allowing him to escape once again. However, this one kind of pushed it over the edge. The cops found out where he lived, and although he wasn't arrested for Grand Theft Auto, because as it turns out, the Z06 wasn't actually stolen, 21-year-old Carlos Clark did get arrested for felony fleeing to elude arrest, assault with a deadly weapon, reckless driving, and according to reports, they also seized the car, found 150 pounds of illegal drugs, four guns, and some cash. I don't think we'll be getting any fresh content from the stolen Z06 anytime soon. That's hilarious. <laughs> Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. That guy just found out what that sentiment's all about. There's less illegal ways to come up with content. <laughs> this has to be the most explosive thing that's came out on the Diddy case. And so you get these people in compromising situations. So Jesse Waters, longtime notable Fox anchor, is on the PBD podcast, which by the way, shout out to Patrick Bet David for having Waters on in this type of environment, like a podcast type of feel. This was a great guest to have. And they start with talking about how P. Diddy's bodyguard was like, yep, there was musicians there, there was princes there, there was politicians there. He also had a couple of preachers in there. Oh, damn. And then Pat kicks the story to Jesse Waters, and Jesse says what so many of us crazy tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theorists has been saying for years. It wasn't just this guy that was saying it. Lil Rod, the former producer, filed the lawsuit, and he said every room in Diddy's mansions were wired with cameras. And he had some of the footage, he had some of the pictures, and he displayed those in the lawsuit that came out. And this was used for blackmail material. They bring in these people. A lot of these people were also aspiring young artists in the music industry. And then these parties were sponsored by Motown Records CEO, Universal Records CEO. This goes all the way to the top. And so you get these people in compromising situations. The drinks were laced. The videotapes were hot. And then at the end of the day, you wake up the next morning. Oh, what did I do? And then they have compromising material on you. And then they can guide your career. They could kill your career, but they got you. And it wasn't just people in the music business. As you said, there were athletes, there were celebrities, there were politicians, people from the royal family. And we were also told by the former bodyguard that Diddy was an FBI informant. Whoa. So he was a snitch and was feeding information to the feds. And we don't know what that means. We haven't been able to confirm it. But even little Rod said it's not just like Epstein. It could be worse. Remember that whole term that we're not allowed to say online? You're going to have to figure this one out. But aluminum Bugatti, obviously incredibly explosive. But what's interesting to me is that he said allegedly Diddy could be an FBI informant. And if that's the case, that whole thing that happened was staged. There's a lot of interesting things going on right now with him. I mean, here he is in Florida, randomly, after all that happened, he's just like smiling and shit. Down here at, at Pira Vida by my pad, uh, run into the man right here. Uh, what's up? Miami's like that. Yeah. It's a movie. Almost like he made some type of deal. He's insulated, but everybody else, we're going to find out. The year of exposure and justice. God bless you and have a good day. I'll tell you what that makes me think of. If Diddy was filming all these people doing nefarious things and stuff in his house during all these parties and he was an informant for the FBI, then the FBI is the one who has all these tapes and the FBI is likely the one that has dirt on people and is blackmailing politicians 
And that's what that sounds like to me. If he's doing all this stuff, all this crazy stuff, and getting all this dirt on people, and the FBI got their hand in his pocket, I mean, that just makes perfect sense. Ashton Kutcher is seen as he prepares to be subpoenaed on Diddy's case. That's one. Next one, Sean Diddy Combs' ex Cassie, that he paid off, I think 30 million bucks, whatever the number is, cooperating with federal investigations amid the sex trafficking probe. That, now, that's bad. That's very bad, that's right? Bad. So, next one, Sean Diddy Combs still continues carefree in Miami. This is a story from yesterday. Yep. Lifestyle by smoking and drinking after federal aids. Sean Diddy Combs' youngest son, Christian King, 25, is now sued. So it isn't one thing, it's another thing constantly popping up. But just uh, from my point of view, though, he's in Miami, he's riding bikes, he's taking photos. He seems as if he doesn't have a care in the world. To me, somebody from the outside looking in, it seems like they were like, hey, listen, especially with the Cassie thing, that thing blew the top off of everything. We have to go in there. You don't be there. We're going to make the, the play. We're going to grab all the footage and everything. I think people are going to fall. Nothing is going to happen to him. He's, he's going to be protected. By See, it does appear that way, like he's being protected. I mean, you really can't look at it any other way unless they just don't have anything on him. But if they didn't have anything on him, then what are all these stories about? And why did they do a raid on his house? What was that? You guys. <laughs> I got that. I got that. supposed to react to this i did a little digging and saw that supposedly we had a crescent moon on that night and the moon didn't even look like this so i don't know if this is uh some video footage that someone found and then added this information uh to try to give it the impression that it was real but something's not adding up with the details of when this supposedly took place if this is real is this a plasma discharge showing that the moon is actually plasma I don't know. Very, very interesting video clip without much more to go off of and the little bit of information that we do have leading us to a moon that supposedly looked completely different on that night. Yeah, I just don't know. I just don't know. So does anyone want to explain to me why we ceased to exist for one hour a few nights ago? Yes, you heard me right. Reality ceased to exist for an hour. And that's not all, but we'll get to it. This right here is called the Schumann Frequency. It's the resonant at what the Earth vibrates at. I've been tracking it for years. It keeps up with the frequency of the Earth. Now as we got closer to the end, and even closer to this eclipse, we've had massive jumps in the Schumann Frequency. And last week with the Schumann Frequency, we had the highest on the charts ever, ever. It'll make you feel tired, zoned out, foggy headed, even out of body and can't sleep. As our body resonates with the vibration of the Earth, now it's very similar to how we made anti-gravity machines. The bumblebee is not able to fly with its wings, it weighs too much. But it actually flies by matching the resonance of the air by its wings and the vibration. Google it. Back to the topic. So leading up to this crazy eclipse which we're about to talk about, at 2 o'clock in the morning, reality ceased to exist. The resonance of the earth stopped for one hour. Funny enough, on April Fool's Day, I woke up extremely, extremely late. What could be going on? Things are never as they appear to be. Collaboration White Rabbit by CERN. Alice in Wonderland's White Rabbit always holding a clock, possibly to change time. By now, y'all should be aware, things are not the way we thought they were. Oh, behind me. Funny, right? United States Space Command. Look at the X. Look at the X. 
Look at the X. This emblem has been around for a long time. I found this gem in a video by the Trumpet 333. Check them out. Anyways, what's going on? And what really is the Mandela effect? <laughs> I feel like this guy is missing a glaringly obvious answer to this question. Either the equipment shut off, malfunctioned, or they're doing some updates on it and they had to turn it off for an hour. <laughs> We didn't cease to exist for an hour and then the world booted back up. That's ridiculous. After hearing what could only be described as a judgment trumpet coming from outside while the storm is wailing, he tries to calm his daughter by telling her it's okay. It's okay, baby. But then he captures something even more bizarre. an unidentified flying object whips past his balcony. Whatever this thing was, it was going in the opposite direction of the wind at crazy insane speeds. And to make it even more frightening, immediately after the object flies by, another loud sound comes from the sky. So how do you explain this? What was the object flying by their balcony? And what were the sounds coming from the sky outside from within the storm? Let me know your thoughts. I feel like we just got an explanation on what all these trumpet sounds coming from the skies are. This is an interesting development. It would appear that potentially, if this video is, is legitimate, that these sounds are coming from some of these alien type craft that are flying around. So now the question is, what is the sound for? Because we know that they move around without making any propulsion noises. They're not breaking the sound barrier by moving really fast and creating that sound because we've heard what that sounds like before. It just sounds like a sonic boom. So what is this trumpet sound for? Is it just to instill fear in people and make people think, oh my gosh, is uh, the resurrection happening? Yeah. What's the point of that? Okay, folks, I've been to CERN. CERN is very, very weird. I was actually there a couple of years ago when Russ Dizdar was still alive, well before COVID. So we're there at CERN and we're being uh, taken by a docent who's like basically just parroting what he's been told to say. So we're in this place where the statue of Shiva, Shiva is the Indian god of death, the, basically the destroyer. And I look at the docent and I go, what's this doing here? He has no answer for it at all. Basically, here's the bottom line, and this is something that we need to really delve into here. CERN is built on the site of the ancient temple of Apollyon. Tom Horn, who passed away last year, uh, very untimely, um, wrote about this. So CERN is at this ancient temple. They're going to open up and start using CERN and testing it the day of the eclipse. I mean, what are we looking at here? Is that deliberate? In my opinion, it's absolutely deliberate. Something is going on. Here's what I think is going on. They, the powers that be, are opening up CERN in coordination with the eclipse to open up a gateway, a portal. And that's what I think these sites really are all about. Now, when you go to the Serpent Mound in Ohio, it doesn't look anything like CERN, but it's ancient. And it's, and it's just in Ohio, and it's, it's the longest serpent effigy on the planet. Now, some people will dispute that that's fine, but it's the one that I go to. And that serpent mound is, the serpent is undulating, and the serpent's mouth is open like this. Guess what? The whole thing is built on the solstices, the equinoxes, they're big into this. And these sites are charged. The site at CERN is charged. The serpent mound in Ohio is a charged site. If you want to know more, Check out our On the Trail of a Nephilim uh, series, number number two, Secrets of a Se No, number three, Secrets of a Supernatural. Thanks so much for watching. I am L.A. Marzulli. I just wanted to throw this in as one last little theory. Someone proposing their idea of what's going on with CERN and the eclipse right before it happens. We're going to find out tomorrow if there's any truth to any of these theories. But honestly, 
I'm not expecting anything major to happen. If any of these theories were to be proven true, I don't think we'll find out about it until years from now because I don't think it's going to be some cataclysmic event. I could be completely wrong, and I guess we'll find out tomorrow. <laughs> but that's where I stand at the moment. Hi, my name is Peter Kane. I'm president of the Mermaid Society and Mermaid Foundation. Now, I have looked at this footage, and so have some colleagues of mine from some major universities. Major. And there's a lot of stuff out here with mermaids that isn't real. And this footage here, right here, you're actually going to see a real mermaid in the wild. It's so clear that this is real. Now, Cornell has looked at this. Major universities. Major. Here we go. That is a real mermaid. You can tell by the shape of the tail. Gotcha. <laughs> you know the SR-71, the spy mm -hmm. plane? The thing is, is designed like a razor blade. If you're looking at it straight on, you can barely see the thing. Cause I've been in one. Yeah, okay, so, and it goes um, Mach 2.3, and it, it heats up to 500 degrees. When it lands, it's like the, the outer skin is 500 degrees. 500 degrees will burn your turkey. That thing is just so aerodynamic. Look at the space shuttle. I know, it's so Look at the so space stupid. shuttle. Look at that PVC pipe. Look at all of it. It's a garbage can flying in space. And this thing doesn't go Mach 2.3. This thing goes Mach 23. Okay? Well, just look at all the ridges on there. It looks. It actually looks like a balloon. It is with, a balloon. With tape and vinyl and stuff taped over it. I mean, look at this stuff. I mean, even the windows don't look like they're even real windows. Yeah. This is crazy. Here's another launch during the day. Look at the bounce. Up and down. It's uh, bouncing. It's yeah. 4.5 million pounds. Yeah, and so look, the camera's zooming outwards. This thing is going so slow. Everybody's wondered when they saw the Apollo launches, why is it going so slow? And the, you know, the, the NASA fanboys will go, because it's so heavy. It's got to speed up. It takes time. But why and is that heavy airframe bouncing? Because it's a balloon. Wow. It's a blimp. This is a lighter than air ship. Okay? All of that smoke is just coming out of the ground. We, we've caught them blowing this stuff out of the ground. It's too obscure. It's funny that I found this clip today about the SR-71. Yesterday, in three different comments, I had someone to bring this plane up in regards to my last video, which had a clip about Flat Earth. It didn't have a clip about the SR-71 which is a plane that I'd never really paid attention to. But I had three different commenters tell me that they either knew someone or that they themselves had flown in an SR-71. And the reason they brought this up is because in that plane, they use, the way it was described to me, they use photography to calibrate their equipment. So they'll take photos and then check those photos against their equipment to make sure that everything lines up accurately. Simplest explanation that I can give as to the way I understand it. In these photos, supposedly you can see the curvature of the earth because these planes fly at such an elevation that they're able to capture it. Some of these images are actually so beautiful that they actually just process them to keep. Besides the fact that they need them for this calibration, they're just pretty. One of these individuals actually shared a photo with me, which unfortunately I've been told I'm not allowed to share with you guys. I don't think that this image that was sent to me was specifically from this calibration equipment. It appears to be taken from inside the plane. You can clearly see the curvature of the earth and you can clearly see from the inside portions of the plane that are in the image that they're not using a wide angle lens and that there's nothing distorting the edges of the image. So that curve is there. So until I can get some proof that's definitive enough to me as that was, I will not be showing any more clips about Flat Earth. So I just wanted to throw that out there for everyone. Well, have you heard the theory? It goes back to Tartaria, that the Great Wall of China, it's actually facing the wrong way. The holes that they shoot arrows out of is facing towards China. Yeah. No way. So yeah. it's yeah. suspected that it could have possibly been Tartaria. That's super strange. Speaking of the wall being built by someone else possibly, you want to talk about the Chicago World Fair? Yeah, yeah they're saying they're the, the influence thing. was Tartarian architecture. Have you yeah. seen the pictures? It looked like ancient Rome. They said that they World built Fair. it for the World Fair, but then after they just tore it all down. And it's like, that doesn't sound 
on, Dude, right? It reminds me of that whole conspiracy theory that we just skipped all those years. They rewrote the year of history that it was, mm -hmm. and so we actually are living in right now the 1500s or now, something. Yeah. Right? Now would be difficult because of the digital footprint that we have. Yeah. But it's like it would be so easy just to convince people, yeah, this just didn't happen. It's yeah. that whole Mandela effect thing. The thing is, it's confirmed. Like it literally existed. Like, and so it's just yeah. why why get rid of something like that? I had a few people in the comment section of my last video ask me what the shirts that I created were for. Those are Tartarian flags. And if you're not aware of what Tartaria is, you should do some research on it because it is one of the most fascinating c conspiracies that I personally think exists. It's essentially a large kingdom that's just been erased from history. I'm convinced that there's something to it. We have historical representations of the Tartarian flag, news articles talking about the people of Tartaria. The Great Wall of China clearly wasn't built by the Chinese. There's just a lot of um, evidence that stacks up to point in the direction of there was this great nation that was just erased from history, either for nefarious reasons or because they wanted to be erased, one or the other. There's a little explanation on Tartaria and what the shirts that I've made represent. Uh, that is actually the flag that's on this hat. So this is the Tartarian flag. And if you would like to purchase one of these hats or one of my two shirts with the Tartarian flag on it, you can go to barry-step.com. I will leave a link in the description of the video. Go there and you can buy your shirt or a hat. And I also want to say thank you very much to everyone who's bought one. I've got a ton of fulfillment requests to complete. So thank you all to everyone who's ordered one, thank you very much. Whenever you get your shirt, post a picture of yourself wearing the shirt and Discord, and I will tag you and put you in the video showing you wearing it. A strong storm and severe thunderstorms have affected large parts of China since last Saturday, and the country's National Meteorological Center has issued a blue warning for extreme weather for two days. According to the National Meteorological Center, strong thunderstorms, strong winds, and hail hit several areas of China, including Chongqing, Hua, Hunan, Fujian, Guangdong, and Kangi, with maximum wind speeds reaching from 170 to 190 km per hour. In Anchang City, strong winds toppled greenhouses, trees and street lights, according to information from local agencies. Four people were killed and about a dozen others injured in the chaotic weather. Witnesses said three of them were thrown out of the room while all the windows and walls were blown out. Another may have been hit by a glass roof. However, at a blind spot of the measuring station in King Yuna District and Nong District, there were some wind characteristics that exceeded level 12. At Shangi Bridge, street lights were turned off and property was scattered. At the Wing Ping Shuan community in Nong District, several residents' balconies, windows, and outdoor air conditioners were damaged or even blown away by strong winds.
The Meteorological Center also said that short-term heavy rain also fell in some areas of Hunan, Chongqing, Kangi, and Guangdong, with hourly rainfall ranging from 30 mm to 50 mm and reaching 70 mm in some area. China has a three-level, color-coded weather warning system for severe turbulent weather, with orange representing the most severe warning, followed by yellow and then blue. Please join us every day to stay updated with weather information. Don't miss out, click the register button to support us. Man, the Chinese just cannot catch a break. <laughs> it seems like every other week there's some strange like weather anomaly that's just pounding the mess out of them, or they're having earthquakes or you know, some new disease or something that's running rampant through the streets and just taking everybody out, people collapsing and stuff. Yeah, it seems like a hellscape. It seems like the world's most dangerous place to live in. I'm sorry, but the New York earthquake does get a lot bigger. And just real quick, we'll go over some things you probably have heard already, and then we'll go over the scary things you haven't heard. Yesterday, I just shared how lightning hit the hand of Apollo. I mean, Statue of Liberty. And I mean, the hand, the torch. So then we had this 4.8 earthquake. Well, the eclipse is 4.8. And two hours later, Brazil had a 4.8 earthquake. Of course, 4.8. Before we go any further, it's all speculation, it's all alleged, it's all my opinion. I also just showed you last week this trail of earthquakes going up the eclipse route. Well, where the eclipse hit was called White House Station. And our earthquake map is off the charts right now. I just showed you in this video that in the last three days, Japan and Taiwan both had big earthquakes. Now this right here is the scary part to me. This made me reevaluate and relook into the earthquake map. The central mid-Atlantic ridge has had about 10 earthquakes in the last three or four days. Why does that matter? There have been thousands and thousands of people that had a dream that all of the east coast of New York were underwater. This light blue line is the mid-Atlantic ridge. Now with really big earthquakes, you'll usually have smaller earthquakes that lead up to them. What would happen if there's a major plate shift in the mid-Atlantic ridge? Maybe things going underwater? I mean, we've literally had like 50,000 earthquakes over the last month. I forget the exact number. And the Earth's frequency has been off the charts. Not to mention five incredibly strong storm paths going right along that line I showed you. Now let me take you back to 1811, which was when they had a total solar eclipse and then three months later, for four months straight, they had massive earthquakes all around America. But the widely available illustrations we have of this 1811-1812 earthquake literally show things coming from the sky. That's weird. If you haven't by now, you'll eventually find that everything works in perfect patterns, numbers, letters, frequencies, things happening in the atmosphere. This map is really starting to look plausible, isn't it? Did I miss anything? Let me know in the comments. I'm kind of glad that the eclipse is about to happen and we're not going to have any more of these theory videos because I'm kind of getting tired of them. It seems like everyone thinks that the end of the world is coming and I just don't, I don't think that we're there yet. I think a lot more really, really bad stuff has got to take place before the end times, but that's just my personal opinion. And I guess if I'm sitting here tomorrow with egg on my face, <laughs> I won't have to answer for it that I don't think that the world's going to come to an end because... YouTube won't exist anymore. <laughs> the internet will be out. But I will say this. I do think that there's a possibility of this stuff happening. I don't think it's going to, but I, I, I do believe that the possibility is there. Let me explain. I used to work for a nursing home, and I was the maintenance supervisor there. Part of my job required me to be the safety coordinator. As the safety coordinator, I had to go on all these training seminars. I basically had to learn how to take charge and lead all of the staff in the facility in the event of an emergency, such as an earthquake, uh, a major fire, you know, a tornado, anything like that that could potentially damage the facility and bring harm to any of the residents or employees. One of the training seminars that they sent me to was about the fault lines that lie between the land between the lakes in western Kentucky. I live east of the land between the lakes. They expect that everything west of the land between the lakes all the way to the state line will sink whenever this earthquake goes off. They estimate that we're over a hundred years overdue for this earthquake to go off and whenever it hits it's going to sink everything west of land between the lakes all the way to the state line all the way south into Memphis and that Memphis will be completely underwater. This is their best guess of what's going to happen. This is what they think is the most likely scenario 
when this thing goes off. Something to have lived through this, the strongest earthquake in 140 years, John. Look at all of that, and it's not over yet because we've got the eclipse earthquake coming up on Monday. As Deborah Ross was telling us, it's going to be a transformative experience for anybody who is in the area of totality. <laughs> We have the eclipse earthquake coming up on Monday. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. In March 1811, something appears in the sky called the Great Comet. People were terrified of it. It was the brightest thing in the sky. You could even see it during the daytime. Wow. But they said the coma of this comet was a million miles wide. What? 50 times bigger than the sun. Then in 1811, there was a solar eclipse that happened almost on the same path that this coming solar eclipse is about to happen. Two months later, there was massive earthquakes uh -oh. that happened in the New Madrid fault line. So after the solar eclipse happened, this fault line shifted. But when it shifted, the earthquakes that happened were the worst earthquakes America has ever experienced. Wow. They said there's over 10,000 earthquakes. These locals said the earth was literally opening up, swallowing trees and forests. Yeah. Crazy. But we actually have a comet going around Earth right now that will be most visible on April 8th. This comet is called the, the Devil, Devil Comet. This comet was first discovered in 1812 Josh. and it has a 71 year orbit. I did the math when this comet first appeared. It was 1811. What does this mean for me because I'm an Aquarius? <laughs> Maybe I have egg on my face already. <laughs> it's funny how I can say something and then my opinion can be changed by these clips by the end of the video. <laughs> and again, uh, Again, this is all speculation. Nobody knows for real what's going to happen in the future. But, you know, watching these clips, it's starting to look more and more likely that uh, we're going to have some massive earthquake that's going to wipe everybody out. Like I said, we'll find out tomorrow. I, I'm not convinced that things are going to be any different tomorrow than they are going to be on Tuesday. Aside from we're going to have less people posting videos about the fears of of earthquakes and the eclipse and stuff. There'll be more people posting videos about theories of things that did happen during the eclipse with evidence and proof to try to back up what they think happened and what was taking place. So I'm excited to see those and get away from some of this speculation stuff. It's gonna be interesting to see what happens after this eclipse takes place. But don't run off yet, guys. That is our last clip. I've got a mailbag to open today. Now, before I open any of this stuff, I've got two people I'd like to say hey to. So on my vacation, we went to the mountains up around Gatlinburg, which is, we go there two or three times a year if we're able. It's one of my favorite places in the world. While I was there, I actually got recognized for the first time ever by two different people in a span of about 20 minutes. And I just wanted to say, hey, to Draco, how's it going, dude? Thank you for all your help at the store. And to Daniel, it was nice to meet you at Walmart. Ran into these two guys. They were both super nice, uh, super awesome to talk to. I appreciate both of you being so nice to me. And Daniel, thank you for being so nice to my wife and kids. And now we've got some boxes to open because I went and checked out the P.O. box. First up is a box from Aiden W. Aiden sent me an alien hat, a Bigfoot getting abducted by a UFO hat, an alien lamp, a UFO lamp, this awesome looking little pyramid, this really cool canvas wall art of a UFO. And he also sent me a shirt uh, that I can't show you because it's in the dirty laundry. I actually wore it while I was in the mountains. And all of this comes with a letter. Dear Barry, sorry about the handwriting. I typed out a letter, but my printer would not work. I found your channel around episode 70 and now I cannot stop watching. I started at the beginning and now I have watched every episode and wait patiently every day for the next amazing video. I find your videos and commentary more entertaining than any content, t any current TV show. I love the variety of videos showing multiple viewpoints and topics. I very much like your honesty and that your channel is not dramatic or an act. It is your personal thoughts. I like that you can put a very out there clip but still have a very logical look. I've not disagreed with, with you even once. Nothing too fancy or special but I got you some fun items you might like. If not, no worries. It is more to show my appreciation for your amazing channel that has brought me and thousands of others joy and entertainment. I can't wait to watch your channel and community grow in the coming years. I hope you have a wonderful, fantastic day, and I'll see your next video tomorrow. Aiden, 23, of Phoenix, Arizona. Aiden, thank you so much. This is... I, I don't... It feels weird having people send you stuff that you didn't ask for because you feel like you don't deserve any of these items. Um, but I appreciate it so much. I can't even put it into words. It's like it's like um, it's like getting Christmas early every time I go check out my PO box. <laughs> uh, and and 
you know, I go check and don't even expect anything to be in there. I just don't want the PO, I just don't want the post office people to get mad with me if something's sitting in there for two weeks. So I'll think, oh, I better go check it, and bam, it's full. <laughs> Next, we have a book, The President's Vampire, Strange But True Tales of the United States of America. And this is from Jared. It says, hey man, I really enjoy your channel and your open-mindedness. I bought this book for you because this was one of the first books I bought when I got into the paranormal. Thank you for your daily videos. Keep it up from Jared D. Thank you, Jared. I really appreciate it. I love getting new books, and this is definitely going to get put to good use. Thank you so much. And lastly, this is from Joshua G. Hello. Saw that you hold your mic, but you like to talk with your hands. That's true. <laughs> So I decided to send you this. Keep up the videos. Josh G. Thank you, Josh. Uh, this will get put to use, but not in the sense that you intended. Uh, I have a separate setup that I use for music, and I will be using that on that desk. Unfortunately, I can't mount a microphone and use it on this channel. I think people will probably revolt. <laughs> I've had too many people tell me I can't get rid of the microphone. Thank you very, very much for the gift. I very much appreciate it, and it will get put to use. It will be used for my music setup. Guys, that's the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed these clips that we watched together, and I hope you come back and join me in the next video. Now, I want to let everybody know, I know that this video did not go up on its intended schedule. I had some computer issues. Those are all resolved now. Uh, unfortunately, it was all user error. I messed something up and took me a long time to fix it. But it's all working now, and I will have a video up for you guys tomorrow, just like it's expected to be. So don't think that because I didn't post yesterday and that it got pushed off to today, that it'll be another two days for the next video. I wouldn't do that to you guys. So I hope everyone has a great, safe, fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video.